Kwame McPherson, welcome to Profile. Thank you for having me. And congratulations as well on your win of the 2023 Commonwealth Short Story Competition. At the global level, you're the first Jamaican to have won that. Yep. At the global level yes. and the fourth, only the fourth Jamaican That's at right. the regional level. That's correct, yeah. How, how does it feel, first of all? It's still, I'm still trying to, to, to grasp the, the magnitude of it, um, to understand that being the first Jamaican in anything is, is, a, is an honor. And I'm humbly and grateful for being, to represent Jamaica this, in this sphere, in this, in this area of, of writing. Because we're good writers, but in terms of this, these type of international competitions, we're not seen, basically. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, to be the first is, 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 is wonderful. And I'm, what, I'm, and I'm glad that I've, I've been able to do so. What's the reaction been like? Amazing, <laughs> it's been, and that's and it's internationally, globally actually, it's, it's been, yeah, the, the, the tweets and, and the compliments and, you know, Facebook, everything, it's, it's been, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's like I said, God, we represent it in anything, you know what I mean? You know, Jamaicans are winners. So to, to, for Jamaicans to be winning this, in this area is, is also a great thing. So the reaction has been really, really good, really so, good. And this was the ninth time you were entering the competition. Ninth time. I, 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 and, I, and you're pointing out that this is the first time you're winning when you have actually moved back to Jamaica. Exactly. Yeah. The, it, I, the, the other, I, start, I entered the first time in 2009, the first time I actually entered. I didn't do it consistently, obviously, but um, yeah, the other eight times was when I was away, when I was living in the UK. And one time I come home, I just wrote a story, it got shortlisted, get, you know, win regional and then win global. It's, it's, it goes to show to me that, that there's, there's an essence in Jamaica in regards to creativity. And, and I've been able to tap into it because, like I said, it's not as if I was doing anything different from before. It's just that I've been home and it's, yeah, it's been magnified. Written and published over 10 books. Yeah. Include from poetry to non-fiction yes. to fiction as well. Um, outside of that, you've facilitated motivational creative writing That's workshops right. and presentations. Internationally, you're a book coach and a mentor, which means that you've helped other people That's to publish right. their books. Right. A long list of people. Yeah. Um, and you have a working life that has spanned United Kingdom and Canada. And yeah. I want to talk a little bit about that um, later on. Right. But it seems from what you've said um, in other interviews, that writing has always been around you, yes. but it was never quite something that you did or thought of doing professionally. Exactly. And, and as well as, you know, being in primary school back in the day, we used to write essays, competition, and poetry. Um, and going through high school, I didn't do anything. Calabar High, I went and, and Whereas my brother, who was a, was a better writer at that time, he was winning prizes in high school. I wasn't. I wasn't writing at all. I didn't start writing until I actually left Jamaica and returned back to the UK because um, I was born there, but I never returned there. And it's while I was working in the, in the civil service, someone came to me and said, oh, you know, they, they were like a poem done um, in regards to a, a personalized poem for, for a loved one. And I said, all right, no problem. Give me the characteristics and I, and I create a poem. And that's all I did. They loved it. And then other people started coming and started charging, you know, started to make money that way. Um, you got then, highlighted for that poem. Yeah, I did. I got, I got highlighted. As a matter of fact, I was in the civil service newsletter back, way back then, you know. But uh, again, it was just a hobby. It wasn't something I was taking on seriously. Um, and then that's where, that's where it started. So I entered the competition, poetry competition, started getting recognition for the poetry that I was doing. And, and, and then I decided to do long prose in terms of story training, story, story writing. And even then, I wasn't taking it seriously. I was just doing it um, because I was working in university and all that kind of stuff. So uh, what was the plan up to that point? Because let, let's, let's, let's go back for a moment to something that you said. Yeah. So you say you grew up in, was born in the United Kingdom, but yeah. actually grew up in, in Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. And let's talk first about growing up in Jamaica. Okay, well, my, my, my parents had, had divorced. And my, my father took me and my brother here, um, took us back home because he always wanted to come home. So my mother and my sister stayed in the UK, but, we, but he took us here. And, and, and the childhood here was, was phenomenal. I'm so glad that he did that in terms of growing us up here because when I would return to the UK and saw the socialization of, of Jamaicans or the black community within, in the UK, and I realized that, man, it was, it was the, the, the strain. You know, when you're when there, you see the stress, you, see, you understand, um, you know, the, the discrimination, the racism, all that kind of stuff. And you saw, and it happened to children even when they're in the school. So it's not like in Jamaica where teachers will push you and, and you're ambitious, you know, you know what you want and, and that kind of stuff. In the UK, you, you didn't get that type of support. And that would have been your experience at Calabar, first yeah, exactly. Tarrant and then Calabar exactly. and then Excelsior um, ex College. Yeah, for so why then, if you'd had this experience, decided to go to the UK? Because I didn't have enough subjects. Could you believe that? <laughs> I have no subject. I left, I left Calabar with probably three subjects. Three subjects? Yeah, yeah I left Calabar with three subjects. But you see, looking back now, I realized that the way school was set up, or the curriculum was set up, it wasn't 
geared towards creativity. It was geared towards, you know what I mean, a profession in regards to Dr. Lawyer, you know what I mean? It, it, that's what it's geared up towards. So I was a creative from, that, from then, but I didn't recognize it. And the school didn't recognize it because, like I said, the school wasn't set up for that. So it's only leaving that I, the creativity discovered me. You know, um, and, and I, I even saying that, I, I eventually went on to university, got diplomas and, and management studies and my MBA, all that kind of stuff that I was able to get eventually. But the creativity was always there. I just didn't, I just didn't know that's, that's what I was destined to do. So you pack up and you go to the United Kingdom and what meets you? Because that's a completely different kind of experience. It is. You only knew, you grew up in Jamaica, so yeah. you had never seen it, no. you had never experienced it. No, that's, I'm, How was that different from, from growing up in Jamaica? Culture shock. Complete culture shock. The, the things that I had to grasp, the understanding the struggles of the black community in the, in the UK, and, and what I mean understanding is, is drilling deep. Because in Jamaica, you, you, you know people are in England. That's all you know. But you don't know the stresses and the tension and the strain that people have to go through in the school, on the street, in a workplace. You know what I mean? It, it was, it, it's unbearable in terms to tell you the truth. As a matter of fact, when we were in Jamaica, I always saw people coming from the UK. We said, they're, they're mad, you know what I mean? And 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 it's all and love <laughs> promise, yeah, milk yeah. and honey, you know. And, and we always said English people mad, they kind of walk fast and all that kind of stuff. And it's only when when I actually went there and I recognized why, because the pressure that people are under, and like I said, it's not the color of your skin because people, what were you seeing though? What specifically? What experiences were you having? Um, so, for example, um, in the workplace, I, I, I you know, when I was in the service, no, I was working. The, 20, in, a, in a convenience store before I got a, an official job like in the civil service. So I was working in 20, um, 7 Eleven. And whilst there, I, I remember a white supervisor asking me to do a task. So he didn't say to me, Michael, because that's my, my, my former name. He said, Michael, can you do a task? And he said, Boy. He called you Boy. Yeah, call me Boy. And, and I, had a, I had a tray of um, napkins that I was stuffing at the time. And I took out the tray and I said, Who you call Boy? You know, cause I, <laughs> I just, just a co-worker, cool what stopped me? I said, you know, and I said, don't you ever call me boy again. And that was my first actual experience of being in, in the UK and, and how a white man saw me as a black man. I want to talk a little bit about the UK, but also yeah. um, moving to Canada and the experiences yeah. there. But we have to go to our first break on Profile. My guest is a 2023 winner of the Commonwealth um, short story writing competition both at the Caribbean as well as the global level. Kwame M.A. McPherson and we're back with you on the other side of these messages. Mm -hmm.